Ball State Sports Link's third down chirp is delivered by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza. Visit PapaJohns.com today for more info. everybody and welcome back to another great episode of Third Down Chirp delivered by Papa John's. I'm your host Luke Martin alongside Zach Hughes, Tyler Bradfield. The Cardinals hit the road to Kalamazoo. They weren't rowing a boat but hey <laughs> the Western Michigan Broncos didn't row a boat either as the Cardinals came out with a big win. Those sometimes can be the scariest games you guys. You go on the road and back play against a team who hadn't won a game and they'll just try everything to get that one win. Ball State took care of business up there, and it was a good victory. You know, it wasn't the prettiest of games, but they got they got the W. They got the job done. They're now 7-1. and one. A big win indeed for the Ball State Cardinals. So let's take a look at how the win happened with our recap graphic showing the score of the 38-17 win for Ball State. The Cardinals get the big win. Keith winning 324 yards passing on the day. But the big thing is he passed Nate Davis for a career record of touchdown passes in Ball State history. And look at this, guys. Keith Winning was the only the second quarterback this season to pass for 200 yards against Western Michigan. The other quarterback you'd probably think was another Big Ten foe that Western Michigan played. No, it was Nickel State. So Keith Winning with over 200 yards, and he had that first half against Western Michigan. Now let's go through our opening drive, our three main headlines for the win against Western. Zach, what stood out to you about the win in Kalamazoo? Well, not specifically about the win in Kalamazoo, but don't be complacent if you're Ball State. You've got five wins in a row now. You're getting kind of a lot of national publicity, but NIU to me is still king of the MAC. They're 7-0 this season. They went to that BCS Bowl game last year, and they're fourth in the country in rushing yards. Jordan Lynch just set the FBS record for a quarterback with over 300 yards rushing last weekend. Ball State should still feel like they have something to prove heading into this game against Akron and then further weeks down the road, especially against the game against Northern. The biggest thing that stood out for me in the win against Western Michigan was probably the balance in the backfield. The backfield was extremely balanced with Juwan Edwards and Horatio Banks. And I, I listed them as my X factor, if you, if you remember. Uh, but Horatio Banks, 5.1 yards per carry. Juwan Edwards, 5.2. Both averaging over five yards per carry. They both scored a touchdown. Horatio playing with a ton of emotion, of course, due to the tragic loss of his former high school teammate, Demarius Reed, who was shot up in Eastern Michigan. But ultimately, a nice win for the Cardinals. They're now 7-1. You know, was a win. I think that's what stands out to me. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't the most beautiful win, but Ball State got the win. That's what's important going on the road. Coach Limbo told me after the game, I said, Coach, it's important to get that win on the road. And he said, Luke, I don't care if we're on the moon. <laughs> as long as we get the win, it's really important. But one thing that really stood out to me about what Coach Limbo said after the game was he said, quote, sometimes we look pretty good. Sometimes we look pretty bad. Sooner or later, it's going to catch up with us. Well, it didn't catch up with them in Kalamazoo. As bad as they played, as not great of a ball game that they played, they still controlled the game for most of the afternoon, and there was never one of those moments where you went, this could get out of hand in Kalamazoo, and Western Michigan could, could get the win. But the Cardinals got that all-important win, and that's what matters when you go on the road in the Mid-American Conference. We caught up with head coach Pete Wimbo at his weekly presser, and here's what he had to say about that win. So I was really pleased with our focus going in, and uh, I don't think there was any question our guys were ready to go. It was quite a battle in the first quarter, back and forth. Um, we stuck to our plan, and, and eventually were able to uh, sustain uh, a solid lead by the half. But uh, a lot of credit to our kids and, and their maturity level. 
Huge thanks to Coach Limbo for taking time to talk to us at his weekly press conference on Tuesday about that win against Western Michigan. All right, now it's time for a segment people have been loving here on Third Down Chirp. They don't like the questions we ask <laughs> and the stuff we debate. As we continue our great fan Q&A with our players and coaches here at Ball State as they had some burning questions to ask some Ball State football players and coaches this week. My question is for Zane Fakes. Um, I know there's a lot of trash talking that goes down on the field. I want to know what the lamest thing somebody said to you was. Um, probably something to do with cutting my hair. Like, I know they try to think like think it's funny or something, but it doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't get to me. Like making fun of someone's haircut, I guess, on the football field is kind of kind of lame. My question is for Deshaun Hurley. Who on the defense would most likely be caught watching the Notebook? Uh, I would say Zach Ryan because you know he's probably one of the more feminine guys on defense. <laughs> Man, it's always great to see what the questions the fans come up with of the players. I'm telling you, they, I think the players and coaches love those questions more than us. Uh, I, I think so, too. It's a great segment we introduced here, and I really <laughs> like it. I look forward to going out and getting those questions every week. No <laughs> doubt. It should be a lot of fun the rest of the year. But now it is time to focus on the Akron Zips, and let's meet those Akron Zips, who right now on the season, you look at their record, and they're 2-6 and six overall and 1-3 and three in the Mid-American Conference. You think, ah, uh, this probably should be an easy one for Ball State. Well, the Akron Zips, they were near misses at Michigan and at Northern Illinois. They had a chance to win both of those football games. Their head coach, Terry Bowden, the son of Bobby Bowden, who was at Florida State for many years, one of the College Football Hall of Famers right now, is the current all-time wins leader in Division I college football. And Akron has one of the best passing attacks in the country. They run that no-huddle, tempo-style offense so it should be a great game Saturday in Akron, Ohio. So let's meet this Akron Zip team by having our Ball State coaches and players break them down in our weekly Third Down Chirp Scanner Report. Well, I think finding a balance. You know, we can't, uh, you know, I know we've been throwing the ball well, but we can't just say, you know, we're going to go in and throw it. It's always about turnovers and protecting the football. And then those critical situations, I think third down is going to be a big down for us. They're really athletic on defense. It's going to pose some problems for us just because of their speed, their size, their athleticism. We just got to execute our offense, and um, it should take care of itself. Well, I think the quarterback's a really good player and uh, knows how to operate the offense, knows where the ball should go and all that stuff. And they, and they spread you out, and so, you know, you don't get to gang tackle much, you know. So it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one tackles. And, and then I think their tailbacks are a really, really good player. You know, they, they've got some, some, some players that have ability that are, that are talented, and then they, they really spread you out and make you defend the whole field, and that's a challenge. Um, I think just their receivers, they make plays. You know, they might not be the fastest guys around, but somehow they manage to run past people and, you know, make plays. The quarterback's a very good player, but, you know, I think, and, you know, I'm confident in, my, in the secondary, and I'm confident that we can get the job done. Huge thanks to the Ball State coaches and players for scouting Akron for us for our third down trip scout report. Now it's time to hear what Zach Hughes and Tyler Bradfield think. All right, guys, let's put on your coaching cap a little bit. Who's going to be the X Factor this weekend in Akron, Ohio? Luke, the X Factor for me is Eric Patterson in the Ball State secondary. You alluded to it. Akron's a very pass-heavy team. They're averaging over 228 yards through the air and only a little over 100 on the ground. So the secondary for Ball State, Eric Patterson in specific, they really need to play well if Ball State wants to stay in this game. The offensive line for Ball State also has to play well because Akron has a very good pass defense. Uh, they have two excellent pass rushers, one of those Nico Capone, right now 13th in the country in sacks. And then also you have to mention Albert Presley, top 10 in the MAC in tackles for loss. Matthew Page, the left tackle, protecting Keith Winning's blind side, has to be big. Zach Hughes stealing Luke Martin's notes. Of course, <laughs> passing is going to be a key factor. That's why you got to go with someone in the secondary. But I'm going to go with Jeffrey Garrett. Jeffrey Garrett has been huge this year for Ball State. Seems like every big-time football game, he steps up, makes a big play, interception against Virginia, interception against Kent State. If the Cardinals want to get a big win on the road at Akron, you're going to have to, and especially when Akron's going to be throwing that ball up tempo, no huddle offense. It's going to be a lot of fun Saturday afternoon in Akron, Ohio. Jeffrey Garrett, the X Factor for myself. All right, now it's time for the predictions. Big game, new kickoff Saturday. 
who gets the W, Zach? Well, we've been talking about it a lot, but Akron's really a lot better than their record says. They're two and six, but their six losses this year have come to teams with a combined record of 32 and eight, you guys. And when this team's clicking, they're very good. I just think Ball State and Northern Illinois are on a crash course. I have Ball State on the road in a close one, 30 to 20. I agree with you 100%. I think the record for Akron is very deceiving. They're a better football team than two and six. With that being said, I think Ball State will get the win by two touchdowns. It'll be a touchdown game throughout. They'll add one late, 35-21. Cardinals will get the win, 38-27, but one stat to watch is going to be third downs. Ball, uh, Akron, earlier in the year, they held North Illinois to one for 15 on third downs. When you got a quarterback by the name of Jordan Lynch, that is really, really impressive that Ball State, uh, Akron was able to do that to North Illinois. So, and Ball State is a very good third down offensive team. So it's going to be interesting to see if the Cardinals can do that as Ball State should pull out a huge win at Akron, Ohio. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Third Down Chirp this week, delivered by Papa John's. Remember, we are on social media. Follow Ball State Sports Link on Twitter at BSU Sports Link and follow Third Down Chirp on Twitter at Third Down Chirp. But also give Ball State Sports Link a like on Facebook by searching Ball State Sports Link. For our great producers, Drew Adamson and Alex Seitz, for the real talent of the show, Zach Hughes and Tyler Bradfield, I am Luke Martin saying so long, and we will talk to you next week.